the last thing that I got a lot of questions about from you guys was dealing with comparative advantage in terms of trade. So I thought to uh, change this up a little bit, since you, you've already seen the examples that, that you know, we went through in the packet, I thought I would go through one of the examples from your summer reading from uh, New Ideas from Dead Economists by Todd Buchholz. I stole this from the book. Okay, just making sure I don't get in trouble. That's okay. Buchholz stole it from Gilligan's Island. I remember this episode with the huts oh, and the fish okay. dinners. It was excellent. Okay. Thank you for playing. A movie all right. star. Never mind. Um, all right. So the idea is that if we do not specialize, okay, if Gilligan divides all of his time up between making huts and catching fish dinners, and the skipper divides all of his time up between making huts and catching fish dinners, this is our total output, considering, of course, that he's going to make Gilligan work a lot longer and Gilligan is also less efficient. Okay, so what do we have right now? We have totals of 90 and 220. But if they specialize, if we say, okay, instead of splitting our time between huts and fish, Who's better at both? What are the numbers that we end up with? If the skipper spends all of his time on just huts, he would get 100. If Gilligan spends all of his time catching fish dinners, we have 240, which gives us bigger totals than if we just had 90 and 220. So already we're doing better. But how does this relate to terms of trade? Instead of just looking at it, you know, from this very small kind of micro economy of, you know, the castaways on the island, let's consider this as a trade example. If we were going to look at this in terms of a PPF, we would have to look at it in terms of, okay, if Gilligan spent all of his time on huts, his total production would be 80, or if he spent all of his time catching fish, it would be 240. Whereas if the skipper spent all of his time on hunts, it would be 100, and all of his time on fish, it would be 200. Now, if they're going to trade fish dinners for huts, what should be acceptable terms of trade? There are a couple of different ways we can look at this. The first thing that you probably want to do is draw PPF. And in an example like this, you're going to have to look at what exactly the problem says. If it is um, constant opportunity cost, then your, PPS, your PPF rather, is a straight line. And that's just a lot easier to deal with, so you may see that in a question like this. So let's go with um, huts and fish. And we'll put Gilligan on this graph, and we'll put the skipper over here. It's like patriotic or something. Okay, so for Gilligan, if he spends all of his time making huts... I just want to point out that Gilligan does wear a red shirt, and the skipper does wear a blue shirt. Oh, there you go. Pretend that's even. It's going to take a lot of pretending. Uh, use the powers of your mind. All right, so if these are in units of tad, we would say... Oh, and I just did that backwards. No, no, I didn't. Okay, 8 for Gilligan and 10 for the skipper. And then for fish, if we do this in units of... Twenty? No. Now, look 
looking at our output. When you're looking at absolute advantage, we're looking at who is producing more at least cost or using the least amount of resources. In terms of our output, we have the skipper who is better at huts, and because he's a lot faster, he's working less hours, we have Gilligan in the course of a year who can catch more fish because we've limited them in their labor just to kind of put them on the even playing field. So who has an absolute advantage in huts, the skipper? Who has an absolute advantage in fish, given the, given the fact that he's less efficient but he's working a lot more hours, total production is higher for Gilead. So what would they be willing to trade? And you can see the total production because This intercept is a lot farther down that line. This intercept is a lot farther vertically. And that's how you can tell the absolute advantage. But how do we get terms of trade? We want to look at what it costs in the terms of each product. What are you giving up to produce units of the other product? So for Gilligan, our ratio is 1 to 3. One hut is worth three fish dinners because we divide. Or, conversely, doing it the other way, one fish dinner is worth a third of a hut. If we look at the skipper, we have a one to two ratio. So that one hut is worth two fish dinners, or a fish dinner is worth half of a hut. So what would be acceptable terms of trade to both of them? For Gilligan, he's going to want to get, for example, if he's talking about a fish dinner, if he trades a fish dinner for more than one-third of a hut, or in other words, if he trades three fish dinners or less than three fish dinners for a whole hut, he's doing pretty good because it's better than he can produce on his own. For the skipper, if he trades a hut for more than two fish dinners, then that's okay with him. So using this example, and you might want to go back if you have the book at home. Um, this is in the chapter on Ricardo dealing with issues of um, comparative advantage with trade. The idea of comparative advantage is that you're looking at the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost in these cases is one product in terms of the other. To gain, excuse me, <coughs> to gain one product, you have to give up some of the other. How much are you willing to give up in terms of trade? You want to do better than you can do on your own. And as long as you're doing better than you can do on your own, then the terms of trade would be acceptable to you. That's how this works. So absolute advantage. Who's making more of a given product um, using essentially the same resources? We want to put the resources on an even playing field. We've seen that in some of the problems we've worked. Um, if you're just producing more, we saw that, okay? Then Gilligan would spend all this time here. The skipper would spend all this time here. Um, does that give us a higher total output? Yes. But if they wanted to trade, what would be acceptable? They want to do better than they can do on their own. Gilligan would want to trade no more than three fish dinners for a hut. The skipper would want to trade no more than one hut for at least two fish. If they do that, they're good. 